This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise boast of their wisdom or the strong boast of their strength or the rich boast of their riches. But let the one who boasts boast about this, that they have the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Praise you, Father God. Good morning, KUC. You guys ready to worship? Let's stand. Let's stand.
good amen and father we recognize you lord we acknowledge you right now god that you're worthy of our time you're worthy of our praise god so we want to fix our eyes on you lord we want to give you our attention right now god we recognize your cross and your salvation that is not made for perfect people lord in fact, it was made for broken people, God. But that you would use broken people all around the world to bring your, your perfect message, God. And through that, Lord, we see power, God. We see power in your, in your salvation, in your cross, in your resurrection, amen. And we can testify to that. We can boast about that. We as the weak, Father, can boast of your strength, God. We as the broken can boast of your healing. sing it out. Let's declare it out right now. In the name of Jesus, there is power, Father God. In the name of Jesus, there's promises that are fulfilled, Father God. And you call us right now by your name, Lord, your people, Father God. We humble ourselves, God. We say this time is yours now, God. This time is yours. We want to worship you and exalt your name on high right now. So with voices lifted up, God, we open our mouths to praise, to bring forth your praise, God. Yes, Lord. Power. 
you are, God. How powerful, Lord, that you would part the Red Sea, God, the God of miracles, God. I want to just take this time to recognize the Father, the God that we serve, the God that we worship, the God of great men. And this is not about us. We fix our eyes on you, Lord. We welcome what your Holy Spirit is doing, God. We declare power in that, Father. No stronghold too deep, Father God. No sin so binding, Father God. No chain too thick, Father God. By just the name of Jesus, we cast out evil, Father God. So can we just declare praise? Can we declare power by his name right now? Father. We want to see you change this church, Father, in the name of Jesus. We want to see our children grow in your ways by the name of Jesus. We want to see your blessing that you have for us at Kalihi Union Church, God. We don't want to miss on that in the name of Jesus. We want to dedicate this service, this campus to you in the name of Jesus. There's power, Father God. That we just speak it, Father. Let's just sing that one more time. Yeah. 
every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Last time. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. hearts and our ears.
of all kings, we declare out with praise, Father God. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, wonderful, powerful is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. His love is here. Would you share his amazing aloha, his love? Could you give it to the people right next to you? Share some aloha. Kalihi Union Church, we are so glad that you are here to honor and worship the Lord this day. May you be blessed in this service. If you are a guest or a visitor, we welcome you to our ohana. You're part of our family this day. And so please be connected to many people, including the people who brought you. Thank you so much. We've got lunch today after the service. Lunch. You excited about that? Yeah. Yes, lunch. <laughs> Woo. In two Sundays... On January 27th, 9 a.m. in the sanctuary, we're going to have our annual meeting. Uh, January 27th, 9 a.m. here in the sanctuary. It's going to be a great time. We're going to look back at 2018, how God has worked powerfully in our church. And we're going to look forward as well, see what God has in store for us. It's going to be a great time. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Also, save on your calendar. Look forward to February. February 3rd, we start new Sunday school classes. And we're having just Sunday school as a, a foundation for us to learn and soak in the word of God by amazing teachers who are willing to be a part of KUC to teach the word of God. Sunday school for all ages, 9 o'clock. Also on February 3rd, we're starting a new service called Genesis 9. And that will be at the 9 o'clock hour. This doesn't affect any of the Sunday schools or things going on currently. But we are having an additional service which will be a blessing for us in the body life here at KUC. You can look in their bulletin for more announcements. I'm going to ask the children to come on up for our children's moment. Good morning, guys. I need you to repeat after me. Let anyone who boasts, Let anyone who boasts. Boast, in boast in the Lord. Let's try that again. Let anyone who boasts, Let anyone who boasts. Boast, in boast in the Lord. So what does boast mean? I'm going to break it down very simple. Boast is something you're very proud of. And you talk about a lot. So I have three things in my bag over here, my, my bag right here. So can I have helper? Can I have someone to help me grab something? Can you grab, can you grab something? Just pick something right out. Pick it out. Pick it out. Pick it out. All right. So I have this across, right? Let's, what else do we have? We have something else in here. Pick something. Pick something. Pick something. Pick something. Yeah. We have a $100 bill. <laughs> and one more thing, one more thing. Let's take this thing out, take it out. We have my certificate of ordination for the EFCA. <laughs> hey, so let me ask a question. Should we boast about this or should we boast about this or should we boast about this? All right, so let's have cheers. Let's have cheers. Cheer if you think we should boast for this. Wow. Oh, no Chinese in here. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, how about this? How about this? The Bible says, wow, 
Whoa, Pastor Lane, thank you. The Bible says that we should always boast about Jesus Christ. We should always be proud of him. We should always declare him to everyone everywhere. Let us pray. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you that we can boast about you. Give you praise. Declare your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, children, we're going to Children's Church. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that we have the opportunity and the ability to gather here this morning to worship you. Thank you for the life-giving rain this morning that renews and fulfill us. And in this new year, you know each one of us. And I pray that you give us the desire to know you as well as you know us. You know the needs of each one of us within this congregation and outside of this congregation. And I pray for the specific answer to our prayers of need, whether it is financial, spiritual, health, family, or many others. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the ability to give, whether our gift is pre presented as time, as talent, or as money, you cherish each of our gifts as they are given in worship and honor to you. We love you, Lord, and we lift our hearts to worship you. Amen. Uh, let's uh, bow our heads and pray for the offertory. Mom. Father in heaven, thank you for this body of believers. And... I pray that we can bless all of our ministries and watch them flourish. And dear God, we just pray that our money, the fruit of our labor, would go to something greater than us. That it would just go to these people who are doing your work. These missionaries in foreign countries who wish their lives and their livelihoods to spread your word, and to preach you, and to do what is good. And so we pray that what we can give will benefit them, and we just pray that you're glorified uh, in your name. Amen.
Good morning. I am so pleased to be here this morning, um, probably for more than one reason. Uh, the best reason is we get to worship Jesus. I get to be with family, and I get the opportunity to serve you, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, one of the ways that I do serve people is by going to hospital to come and visit you whenever you may be there, and that's a beautiful privilege. Now, I didn't think on Thursday morning that I would be in hospital. Uh, so, normal day for me, and then I reached out for the towel after shower, and the worst pain hit my back in a gripping spasm that caused me to lose breath and so forth. Um, it didn't take me long to realize I needed to go to ER. And so miraculously, I managed to get there on my own. And when I arrived, they got a wheelchair for me because I was in a lot of pain. Now, miraculously, also, I texted my wife. She has a different schedule than myself. And the text arrived at her phone when she was exactly on the bus outside Queens West. <laughs> so she gets the text, and she went, wait, let me off. <laughs> so she was able to be with me the whole time. They gave me morphine, and I don't know what other kind of of drugs. Uh, this morning I'm on the medication of the Lord and may he be with us. <laughs> One of the interesting things about that episode was um, I had been concerned about a lump I had in my stomach and when I came out from a CT scan, because we originally thought this was kidney stones and if ever you've been there with kidney stones, that's a painful experience as well. Uh, they said, you don't have any kidney stones on this side, but you do on that, but you also have a hernia right at the top of your stomach. So praise God, they found the hernia, and uh, we are going to get a small surgery to take care of that, Lord willing. And today I want to look at stewardship by the Lord's grace. So we'll look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 9 which was read so well this morning, uh, verses 23 and 24. And if you have a Bible in front of you, uh, it would be page 1,190. We'll give you time to get there to Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. And after that, we'll look in the New Testament at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 31. Now, as you're still searching for that passage, what is our purpose for today? Well, our purpose for today is that you will comprehend God's truth. And I think that's probably the purpose every day, that we would comprehend, that we understand God's truth. But more than that, that we go to another level, that you will be conformed by this truth. Or some people say, transformed by his truth. And finally, if you are so conformed and transformed that you also will communicate this truth to others. Now, in your, uh, when you come into the church, hopefully you get a bulletin. Thank you for everybody who puts the bulletins together. On the front of that beautiful, glossy bulletin, we have a title for today's message, which is Stewardship by the Lord. Now, I'm not referring here to the kind of stewardship that the Lord has. As great as the Lord's stewardship is, and that would be a good message to have, how the Lord stewards his gifts. I'm talking about stewardship by or alongside the Lord. There's a close proximity that there is a relationship between you and the Lord, as you carry out your stewardship, to be beside him, to be alongside. So as you comprehend God's truth today, and as you are conformed by his truth, 
I pray that you will go out and communicate this with him by your side. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, your Bible, your Holy Scripture, your chapter and verse is incredible and never fails to move us, Lord. And the depths of the Bible, who can understand? But we pray today, Lord, that we will comprehend the truths that you give to us through Jeremiah and to the church at Corinth. We pray that we will not just understand these words, but that we will be conformed to them and changed by them, and that we will share these words with others. In Jesus' name. If you want, you can read along with me the passage. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise boast of their wisdom, or the strong boast of their strength, or the rich boast of their riches. But let the one who boasts boast about this, that they have the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord, who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in these do I delight, declares the Lord. And then in 1 Corinthians 1, 31, Paul says to the church at Corinth these words in that first chapter. Therefore, as it is written which is referring back to Jeremiah. Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. If you find yourself at a gathering, party, maybe even standing at the bus stop, maybe at the water cooler at work, you have some time on your hands and you have a conversation with the people there, it's not too long before you start speaking about things that matter to you. My grandchildren did this. Oh, my stocks went up. Right, Lane? My stocks went up. (laughs) My team won. Commiserations to your team yesterday if they lost. And Paul uses the language of boasting here. Now, for us, when we think about boasting... We often think of it in a kind of negative way. It's bragging, it's self-praise, it's pride, (coughs) boasting. You see it on the football field sometimes, and it's the wrong kind of pride. But Paul, in his message to the Corinthians, uses boasting in this passage in a very positive sense. Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Because it's not speaking about the self, it's speaking well of the Lord. Now, if this truth is comprehended by you today, if you get it, that we're supposed to boast in the Lord, if you get that, I pray that you'll have this next step occur, that you'll be conformed. Conformed to that truth that, yeah, I should boast in the Lord, and then tell it to others. Now, what does all of that have to do with stewardship? Well, let's comprehend again, remind ourselves of Jeremiah 9.23. Let not the wise boast of their wisdom, let not the strong boast of their strength, or the rich boast of their riches. All of us here today have some level of wisdom. All of us have some strength. My back right now has virtually none, and I'm just better standing up. But all of us have some strength. And all of us have some riches. And all of these things, our wisdom, our strength, our riches, we are given to steward, to take care of. So let me ask you this question this morning. What do you think of, how does your heart react when you think of stewardship? Probably something like this. To take care of things. Now, I'm just remembering right now, when I was a child, my father was Merchant Navy, and I went on one of the super tankers as a five-year-old. 
And on, on the British Navy ships, they have something called a steward. Probably have them in the American Navy. And I went down to breakfast, and I was fed these very stale cornflakes. I can still remember the flavor and the taste now, because they go to sea for months. And this steward came up to me and said, who are you? And I said, I'm the captain's son. <laughs> and he said, ah, the captain's son, hey? He says, if you're not good, I'll cut your tongue out. <laughs> I was terrified. That was the worst image for me of a steward all my life. <laughs> he was supposed to take care of things, and he was willing to cut my tongue out. <laughs> my father thought it was funny. <laughs> We are supposed to take care of things. But often when we think of stewardship, we can be filled with some negative thoughts. I have to take care of it. I have to do this. I have to do that. <clears throat> negative feelings and thoughts do come in. That's true for children. Do your chores. Clean up after you. Take care of things. So parents... How many times do you teach your children to steward things? Hopefully, all day long. But it's also true for adults, too. We have to pay our taxes, take our medication, drive with care for others on H1. <laughs> we have to pay our tithe. Negative feelings and thoughts come in. And ultimately, whether we're child or adult, because our heart has a tendency to want its own way and not the way of another, we're not the best stewards. It's too easy, would you agree, not to count it joy. We love to amble in the bramble. We love to grumble and moan. The negative thoughts come in, I've got to do this becomes a burden instead of a blessing. In essence, we can abuse things, I think, or we can treasure them. That's the dividing line. We can abuse what's given to us, or we can treasure. And our heart will lead us in the direction that we take. So you can go to all kinds of seminars to change your thinking, and you can go to all kinds of practicums to change the way that you do things, but ultimately, what is really needed is a heart change. Sure, we know, we comprehend the truths, right? We know that service starts at 10.45, correct? We know that, don't we? And yet so often, service seems to start at 11. <laughs> Or 11.15. <laughs> it's the direction of the heart. And last week, pastor spoke to us that God gives us a new heart, Ezekiel chapter 36. A new heart that we may go from glory to glory to glory to glory. A new heart that doesn't abuse things, but treasures them. Now, I can be a bit of a nerd at time, and so I looked up some synonyms for abuse, and here are some of those concepts or ways of describing abuse. One of those is misuse. Again, I recall my father saying to me, why are you using a hammer on that Phillips screw? <laughs> Use a screwdriver. I was mistreating not only the hammer, but the poor screw. We often treat things badly. I call to mind my brothers who used to beat me. <laughs> we can be offensive at times. We can. We defend ourselves, but often we're offensive. We can certainly squander things, but the worst ones are often verbal abuse, cruelty, and to pervert that which is good. Now, I know in this community, some of us love to go to Las Vegas and win money. It's called gambling. And when I was at cemetery, I mean seminary, <laughs> uh, 
I had some younger friends, they used to play poker. And they say, Clive, come and play poker. Now, it wasn't that I was specifically against poker itself. Some pious kind of person that just does good. I asked my friend Mike, what's the real purpose of poker? He says, well, you just have some fun. I said, but what happens when you play? He says, well, we take each other's money. <laughs> and that's the rub for me. Do I really want to engage in taking other people's money? So I had to have a heart check on that because it sure looked like a lot of fun. And they're all seminarians. But do I want to walk down the path of taking someone else's money? I don't think so. These are just some of the ways that we can abuse things or people. And I've kind of grouped them into four main categories. M-I-S-C. To mistreat, to impress, to squander, and to control. I think a good example of these four categories is money. We can certainly mistreat what has been given to us. We can even mistreat others with money. We can impress people with money. We can certainly squander it. And in the worst cases, we can control other people. So we might comprehend God's truth, that we should never mistreat or impress pridefully or squander or control. We may understand that in the head, but has the heart, has your heart been changed yet? From what perspective then should we view all the things we've been chasing in the past? And it might be helpful now just to give you a possible description of stewardship. The careful use, control, and management of the possessions of another that have been entrusted to someone. Now, would you agree with me that that definition or description, while very technical and accurate, is incredibly boring? <laughs> now, this is the kind of stuff that you learn at cemetery, and that's why I call it cemetery. But on the next slide, what we see is this, a highlight of the words of another. So I want to make this description pop a little bit for you today. See, all of us have been given things by God, amen? And we should be careful. We should control things, not in a bad way. We should control the weeds here and take care of them. We should control things for the safety of our children. And we should manage well the possessions. But I'm highlighting here those two words of another. Now these things have been given to us. We've been entrusted with them. I'm hearing some great reports about one of our classes that we're offering from Patty Coons, a study in Esther. Now that opportunity for her to teach has been entrusted to her. And she can fill in all the blanks, she can do all the lesson plans and put together a church or a class title, which we want. But the ultimate stewardship is when she says, this is yours, Lord, and I serve others. Amen. To think of the other when it comes to stewardship, is key. It's key in helping us treasure what has been given. So for you younger folks, do your parents tell you to clean up? Pretty sure they do, right? The immediate thought is this, I have to clean up. <laughs> I have to clean up. <laughs> Whereas a new thought could happen if you're transformed, which is this. I can do this for my mom, my grandmother, whom I love. And they've asked. So I'll do it because they asked. So often we think of stewardship as something we must do. 
We comprehend that we must carefully use, that we must well control and manage things, but often those things actually take a hold of us. And we become conformed to them. I have a friend back in England new years ago sharing the gospel with him, and he seemed to be warming up to the gospel. I praise God for that opportunity to communicate what had been conformed in me because I had comprehended the truth. Now, I left England, came over here, married Maya, went back to England, and I met my friend Rod. And Rod had arms like legs, muscular. This guy had been working out, working out, working out. And nothing wrong with working out. But here was the language that Rod had. I asked him, hey, Rod, how's it going? And he says, the gym has become my God. And you can see. I called him suitcases because he walked around like this. The very things that we're supposed to steward can take hold of us. And it's hard letting go of them. If you've been a camp leader and God says, I want you to do something different, hard to let it go. If you've been a great sports person and God says, time to enter a new phase in your life, hard to let it go. Wisdom, power, and wealth. Jeremiah understood those three things. Wisdom, power, and wealth. There's nothing wrong in them themselves, right? The problem is that they can capture our heart and our mind. And what we really want to do is worship them rather than God. So often we think of stewardship as something we must do. And I would say this, that without a new heart, we will not grow from glory to glory, but potentially we go from shame to shame. Many is the wise man who boasts in his wisdom, yet he is empty. Many is the wise man who is rich and boasts in his riches, but is empty. And many is the strong man who is strong and boasts in his strength, but he is empty. Stewardship can be rooted in how we think on the one who gives. Or it can be focused on what we're supposed to do. If you go to any school, pretty much a student will say this in class. And you've probably said it, I've said it. Is this going to be on the exam? <laughs> because you want to comply and you want to get the marks. But all that other stuff, if it's not going to be on the exam, why bother learning it? Is that the horizon that we set when we live our lives beside Jesus? Uh, this Bible certainly gives us clear examples of stewards, Adam, Joseph and Daniel. And all of these men steward what has been given to them to different degrees. Adam certainly blew his stewardship, right? But Daniel is a favorite of mine because even when there is no temple in a foreign land, he will still worship the Lord. Many examples of stewardship in the Bible, not to mention the priests in the tabernacle and the seven chosen by the church in Jerusalem. They're found throughout the Bible. And of course, Christ himself teaches about stewardship. And again, if you go to seminary, you'll pick this up. Stewardship is to emphasize accountability. It is about our individual responsibility. And it is that. I get it. It is that. Can we go to the next level where we say, 
I do want to be accountable to you, Lord. I do want to be responsible, but I want to do it with you by my side. Stewardship by the Lord. Is, is, is it good, is it honorable to be a good steward? I think so. If we're not to go from shame to shame, but from glory to glory, does God's word validate such a notion? It is honorable to be a good steward. Paul said to Timothy, those who serve well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. That's honorable, right? That is good. Christians are to be wise stewards of their God-given gifts. I've given three examples here that we're to benefit others. It helps develop our gift if we're a good steward and even to care for our own bodies. So maybe my reaching out to that towel was based on just a little bit too much exercise in my New Year's resolution. Maybe. Maybe. I have to steward my body well now for the next few weeks because I'm in a lot of pain. We should do well. Christ taught us that we are to be good stewards. There needs to be focus on doing well. Of course, whether you work as a social worker, whether you work out in the gym, you should steward your gifts well. But be conformed not to boast in that gift, but boast in him who has given you the gifts. Now, any good seminary class would give you the full scope of things, and you at the back, I don't know how good your eyes are, but this is a list of things that we can steward. We can steward the human race, creation, time, money, property, inherited material, environment, our spiritual gifts, our servant Hood, our trustworthiness, not to mention our modesty and our worship. This Sunday morning is not just something you turn up to. It's not. It shouldn't be. Sunday morning should be something you crave and desire and long to come to, such that you'll get in here way early before 10.45. For the remainder of our time together, I just want to focus on one person, a Bible character. Paul, the Apostle Paul. Paul's former world before Christ was one of wisdom, wealth, and power. And if you've read your Bibles, you'll probably agree that his world was full of wisdom, wealth, and power. He was a zealot for God, but before Christ, his focus was in the wrong place, set on the wrong things. Now, I will suggest this. What's interesting to me about Paul is he had the fear of God. So I've heard parents say this. I hope they get the fear of God in them. It will change them. And I'm thinking, that's good. We all need the fear of God in us. I agree with that. But Paul had the fear of God in him before Christ. And what kind of person was he? Paul was educated in the extreme. He knew Hebrew and Greek. He could quote from multiple sources at will, from the Pentateuch, from the prophets, and from Proverbs, and from the Psalms. He could quote the poets, and he could even quote philosophers. This guy was Akamai. He could interpret and debate and of all the apostles, of all of the apostles, Paul alone was a scholar. He's a smart guy. Sharp thinking, the deepest mind, and the strongest will. He was Hebrew of the Hebrews, but he was also a native Greek and a Roman citizen. What's interesting to me about Paul is he could address the Greeks in their own tongue and with convincing force of logic. And he had at his grasp the education of three of the greatest cultural citizens in the world, 
the ancient world, Greek, Roman, and Hebrew. And all of that wisdom came from training. And training back then in all of that didn't come cheap. And there was no FAFSA, there was no Pell Award. Money was needed to be provided for such education. And you think about it too. The Apostle Paul went all over Palestine as a Pharisee. He must have had a big expense account. He had wisdom and he had wealth. And he had strength too. How do we know that Paul was strong? Well, the Bible tells us that he persecuted Christians. Acts 8.3. It's not up on the screen. Acts 8.3. Listen to this language. He began to destroy the church, going from house to house, and he dragged off both men and women. Think about that. Paul dragged off men and women. That's a man with strength. Acts 9.1. He breathed out threats of murder against the Lord's disciples. Now, you may think, well, that's not such a big deal. Okay, most of the Lord's disciples were fishermen. And I wouldn't mess with those guys, would you? But Paul could breathe out murder against those kind of men. Ananias said this to the Lord, Lord, many people have told me about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. Paul had strength. Paul's strength was such that he brought havoc on the people who believed in Jesus. And if you read the account of Acts 9, you'll find find that Paul had sought out permission to go to another city, Damascus, to imprison believers there. Wisdom, wealth, and and power, Paul had it all. But ultimately, where did all of that come from? from God. God had entrusted him with wisdom. God had entrusted him with power. And God had entrusted him with wealth. So even though he was a God-fearer, he wasn't stewarding by the Lord. That's why his message of communication was not one of life, but of death. He abused what was given to him. He mistreated others. He impressed, no doubt, the Pharisees. He squandered what was good for bad, and he controlled others to the point of persecution. Jesus then did not lightly say these words, Paul, why do you persecute me? See, many times we have things, we mistreat, we impress, we squander, we control, because we think nobody's watching. Right? Young folks, isn't that true? We think we can carry out all those things because no one's watching. And yet here's what Jesus says to Paul. Why is it that you are persecuting me? Because when we harm others, we harm Jesus. Paul was on a road to kill. And Paul's road was a road of shame. But Jesus intervened. Amen. That is right. See, not by Paul, but by the Lord. Paul's new road was not one of shame, but glory. And how did he turn that 180 degrees? Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. That's a big transformation, don't you think? Because before, he would say it was about himself. Paul's prior focus was on wisdom, wealth, and power. And I just want to read here from Paul's own testimony in Galatians chapter 1. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I didn't receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. 
For you have heard of my previous way. And this is the point I want to highlight here. You have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age. He was an A grade 4.0 student. I was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. You see the direction he had? But verse 15 of chapter 1 says this, But when God, who set me apart in my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me, so that I might preach him, might communicate him among the Gentiles, my immediate response was not to consult any human being. I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went into Arabia. Paul did not say this, oh Lord, I have to do this. He immediately communicated that which was good because he'd been conformed because he comprehended now the truth. Paul was a man who read Jeremiah how many times before Damascus? Think about it. A Pharisee would have read Jeremiah chapter 9 over and over and over again. He feared God, but it didn't make a difference in his life until he encountered Jesus. I don't think we will be good stewards, brothers and sisters, until Jesus encounters us. So I can tell you all day long, turn up at 10.45. I can tell you outside, come in. What really we need to happen is for you and myself to encounter the Lord when it comes to issues of stewardship. And I pray that it won't be like the Paul's transformation because Paul's transformation was startling. On that road to Damascus, a bright light came and they fell to the ground. Paul was blinded. He could no longer see. He was now blind to wealth, blind to power, blind to strength. He couldn't see anything. And some of you have been there already. But he was taken to a house in Damascus and he was prayed over. That's why at the end of every service, Paddy and Sepe and Eddie, we we want you to come up and be... We want to pray for you. Self-help books were not found on the Apostle Paul's bookshelf. The Apostle Paul didn't attend conferences and seminars. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't attend conferences and seminars. He was changed by the Lord. In that house in Damascus, blindness fell from his eyes... His sight returned, and the next thing that happened, he was baptized. And he began to preach that Jesus was the Son of God. Wow, what a change. What a turnaround. Let me just show this next slide again. What is stewardship? The careful use, control, and management of the possessions of Jesus. So when Chuck takes care of our facilities... I know, based on testimony, that he wants to walk with Jesus when he's doing this. I know that. He communicates to me the gift that he's been given. He's not bragging. Touches me. Should we do well? Should we work hard? I say yes. Should we exercise what has been given to us? Absolutely. We must no longer abuse what has been given, no longer control others, no longer give false impressions, and no longer squander. Yes, we should do well. But let your boast be in the Lord. And what does the Lord delight in? Love, justice, and righteousness. Here's where we close. Some next steps. If I may, I invite you We're about a group of 600, okay? There's not 600 here right now, but our community is basically a group of 600. But did you know that on our database, we have 3,800 people on our database? But we have regularly coming about 600. 
which means that 3,200 aren't coming. <laughs> so I was set a task by Pastor Jonathan, please contact all of these people. 3,800. Don't mind admitting, I was a little overwhelmed. <laughs> there were some moments when I attempted to contact 3,800 people, but I thought, do I have to write another one, Lord? And the Lord said, yes. The Lord was by my side. So pray, read the Bible, study the Bible, be among other Christians, do acts of service and worship. Simple things here that we offer. We have prayer at the end of the month on the 30th. We have 11 Bible studies that go on in Sunday morning. We have Ohana groups that you can be a part of. And every month, we clean up the property, right, Chuck? Acts of service. We have currently many Bible studies to attend. I want to focus on that a little bit now. Why? Because the purpose of this message is that we comprehend the truths. And you cannot comprehend the truths if you're not listening to the truths. So beginning February 3rd, we will have a new semester of classes. And I'm just highlighting three classes out of the 11 that we're offering. One class of the 11 is hearing and obeying the voice of the Lord. Now, I, as part of the Adult Education Committee, was thrilled when I saw this class offering come, especially when I started sitting down with the Lord and asking him, what do you want me to say today? Man, I want to go to that class. Now, I'm going to be teaching myself. But I want to go to that class. We can comprehend those truths. Now, here's the second class I wanted to highlight. I love the title here. It's called <laughs> Weird. Now, don't you want to go to a class that's called Weird? I mean, I want to be there. And Chris and Sarah Worley are going to take you through a study on Weird. Really, I'm thinking, I'd love to just go there, right? But the study is about those facing strained relationships. And that may be important for you this morning. And a third class, just to highlight, is basic Bible skills. And that's by our beloved Terry and I and Jane Kitazaki. So hopefully when you go out on the lanai, be a good steward and look at the class offerings and pray on what you can do. Let's pray. If you want to pray with your eyes open, that's okay. I've, um, I often do that myself. We're going to pray these three things, that we will comprehend, that we'll be conformed, and that we will be good communicators. Heavenly Father, thank you for your truth. Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, or the strong man in his strength, or the rich in his riches. But let him who boasts boast in this, that he knows the Lord, who delights in love and justice and righteousness. May we comprehend that. May we understand that fully, Lord. And may it conform us to be in your image. That we'll find ourselves wanting to come. That we'll find ourselves being transformed and that we will find ourselves communicating your great news to others. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening today. Let's stand as we worship Him. Oh
is found is where you are. Where you are, let's lift that voice. And where you are, but I am free. Holy brothers and sisters that prayed and read scripture today, that sang songs, that organized songs, that put together a plan. Thank you for the media crew, sound and visual, good stewards. I pray, Lord, that we will walk beside you when we steward what you've given us. Let us not do it on our own. Let you have the glory. Let us be guided by you as we walk, knowing that you are able to keep us from stumbling, that you want to present us before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. And so now, Lord, we thank you because you are the only God, our Savior, and may there be glory, may there be majesty, may there be power, may there be authority to you, through you, Jesus Christ our Lord, and may it be before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great week. God bless you.